And welcome back to WTL, everybody. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. We got a special guest, as we promised in the first segment, Lou Lewis Vinicaro, based out of Las Vegas. Lou, thank you for being on board with us. Absolutely love your Bout Business podcast. I listen to it all the time now. Well, first of all, Andy, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, we just happened to be in the sweet spot between the UFC College World Series uh, as well. Hockey playoffs just ended, so it's a good time of the year, and I'm tickled to be on and share some thoughts with you. Hey, and, and you spent some time in Omaha, right? I'm uh, born and raised in Omaha, went to high school there, and then uh, spent some time after college working for my father in the wine business. Uh, but I've lived actually in Phoenix now for the last 22 years. And Phoenix is about a four hour drive, about the same from Omaha to Kansas City. And mm -hmm. so I'm there quite often, uh, you know, five, eight, 12 times a year. It's an easy uh, spiritual drive and it's all desert and there's never weather. I hate to say that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, weather, what's that stuff? <laughs> so um, one of the things with your new website, and we'll talk about that, uh, you really hone in on three, four different sporting events so you don't get stretched too thin when you're coming out with your picks and your analysis. And I appreciate that. Being from Omaha, being from Nebraska, College World Series, we're getting into the thick of it. So I was hoping we could uh, steal some of your time and talk about the CWS. Oh, br uh, bring it on. I've been going since I was a kid. I was there uh, for the championship series a couple years ago, and more than likely it'll be next year when I return. All right. Well, let's start with that game one then. Oral Roberts, the big time underdog. The Cinderella story continues. Take it on TCU. That's Friday, one o'clock Central Standard Time on ESPN first pitch. TCU, the minus 165 favorite in this one. Lou, how do you see this one breaking down? Yeah, I see a good game here, but I, I really think that the TCU pedigree pitching and hitting together uh, is going to be a little bit too much for Oral Roberts. I'm not taking anything away from them, but Oral Roberts uh, found their way through Oregon and really a part of the bracket that was not as tough as some of the other sides. And I do think TCU is the more legitimate team. I lean, lean to them in that first game. Yeah, I really do, too. And, I mean, I don't think you can find a, a better one through nine hitting right now as the Horn Frogs. Uh, those bats have come to life here in the, the postseason. And you did have a future out on TCU, didn't you? I do. Uh, uh, people that follow me, we have four futures riding. And in that bracket, we have TCU as well as the next game we'll talk about, Florida and Virginia, where I think the College World Series winner is liable to come from that game. And so uh, the futures were, we were active in the regionals. Each year I get more active in the regionals. The futures come there. And as we get closer, you know, I kind of see how they lay. That said, I'm really prepared today to try and decipher this College World Series for your listeners as it stands right now, not based on a bunch of numbers that were available 10 days ago. We're going to direct it to uh, these these folks listening now, and really, if if you like TCU, I think it's that bracket, TCU, as well as Oral Roberts, Florida, and Virginia, those are the waters you should be fishing in as opposed to the other bracket, and I'm sure we'll get there. Well, let's take a minute and, and talk about Oral Roberts. I had a lot of buddies of mine saying, oh, they look good, they look good, and I thought I wasn't more impressed with Oregon uh, knocking off Vanderbilt, you know, a top tier SEC team, and they were hosting. So I was completely wrong on that. The Golden Eagles got it done. Do they uh, raise any concern taking on the, the Horn Frogs here in Omaha for you? No question about it. Oral Roberts isn't, isn't just some mishap. It's a good, solid team. And though they don't really appear on a lot of the metrics that I track, mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, the field at the College World Series changes now and things change, wind dynamics, everything changes based on f from where these teams played super regionals to Omaha. You're playing in a hole where yeah. the wind normally blows in. That's not always the case. And so gorilla ball home run teams are <laughs> not as much a premium in Omaha as teams that hit doubles. 
And TCU, very offensive, is a team that makes contact, uh, and they do live to some degree by the home run. Yes, yes, they do. They like to mash. Well, let's move on to the night game there then on Friday. University of Florida, that's one of Jabron's favorites, uh, taking on Virginia, and that's kind of got a hometown feel with the the – the boy from Omaha, O'Brien, the coach, that story. Virginia, uh, slight underdog, though, heading into this one at a plus 100, I'm seeing. Yeah, that started as Virginia minus 120, Florida minus 110 based on starting pitching. Uh, flow has come Florida's way. I can see that because, really, we're talking about two powerhouses, and we know the structure of the College World Series as such as you win those first two games – and now you're in rest easy position. You're skating till Wednesday or Thursday before you have to play again while the other teams beat their brains out, use up all their arms in the loser's bracket. So Virginia, Florida is critical game. And O'Connor, the coach, has Omaha ties. He's going to have the, the Omaha crowd firmly behind him. That said, the SEC is a power and they beat up on each other each each year, and the three SEC teams that are here are all liable to win the thing. I will say I I lean to Virginia in that game, and therefore I lean to them to win the College World Series based on pricing today. Yeah, and, and like you said, it's going to be a little bit of a home uh, home field atmosphere with Virginia, with Coach O'Brien. I've already heard a lot of interviews on local talk radio in the Omaha metro area, so the fans are going to come back out. But it's pretty hard to look past guys like Wyatt Langford, uh, who's you know projected to be a major league all-star once he gets onto the big leagues, and Jack uh, Caglione there for Florida. Just star power across the board. It's going to be a lot of fun. As well as O'Sullivan, a coach that's been there, and he yeah. wanted in, I want to say, 17. So, yeah, I, I'm not taking Florida lightly. What I'm willing to say is the winner of that Florida-Virginia game sets themselves up so perfectly for a really deep run. Uh, I, I just think, uh, in my opinion, the starting pitcher uh, for Virginia gets a little bit of a lean as well. I track doubles, and the team entering the College World Series, number one on the list, doubles hit, is Virginia, and that's because that coach understands how you have to win in that stadium better than anyone. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Florida and O'Sullivan, but yeah. they are a little bit gorilla ball. Yeah, yeah. No, that's an excellent point. That's something I haven't really heard of, uh, tracking the doubles. That that makes a lot of sense, especially in that ballpark uh, with the traditional June time wind blowing in, keeping those balls in the park in play. And a Let's huge park at that. It's a huge park. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Uh, let's move on to game three, Saturday, the first game on ESPN, one o'clock first pitch. Wake Forest, the number one overall seed, breaking the trend, getting it to Omaha, taking on Stanford. Uh, what a way to win. What a way to beat Texas on that walk-off uh, pop-up. Should have been an out. Should have went to extra innings. But give the Cardinal a do. Uh, they pulled it off the one to three-game series. But I saw you on Twitter. You were a little critical of how uh, Stanford used some of their pitching, especially in the first couple of games. Well, I don't know that I'm critical of it, but they sure used the kid uh, Matthews uh, yeah. to the tune of 151 pitches, and he's just a skinny little string bean athlete that can really hurl. I got nothing but respect for the kid, but, I mean, is their goal – I mean, I know their goal was to set themselves up to win the College World Series and watch this kid come back and just be a horse because they're going to need him to. And right now – Wake Forest is a lawnmower, and the rest of the College World Series field is grass, okay? Yeah. And I have to figure as a handicapper, how are we going to beat Wake Forest? And I think there's a logical way to beat Wake Forest. First of all, they come deep, three deep with great pitching, but they're completely gorilla ball home run oriented as mm -hmm. experience against the Alabama game where they hit like nine home runs in a game. Okay, that's all well and good, but if they get a little weather, okay, uh, they're going to have to figure out a way in a tight game how to manufacture a game. And uh, while they haven't lost a series all year, that, that means to me that they're ripe. And who do they get? They get a Stanford team that comes in with momentum. That's the only team that was in Omaha last year. I can't tell you 
how much premium I put in that. Now, okay. uh, Virginia, they've been there twice in the last three years, Florida twice in the last three years. Yes. But the other team that's also been there twice in the last three years, the Stanford Cardinal. I'm going a long way as to saying I'm taking Stanford in that first game Saturday as a huge underdog. Uh, the uh, Wake Forest open minus 190. Now, if you look, they're minus 210. And by the time the game comes, they're going to be minus 230. I'm going to sit back and wait. I'm going to take Stanford because I think they're live and I think they can pull the rug out from Wake Forest in game one. I, I like that. I like that a lot. That's that's where your value plays at. And it makes a lot of sense. They have the experience being the only team returning back to Omaha. How about that game for this one's got it all. LSU. Tennessee. I know early on you're saying, man, I like Tennessee. I think they're on a mission. Tennessee comes in as an underdog, not big time, but plus 145 I'm looking at for this 6 o'clock uh, first pitch on ESPN Saturday night against LSU. So, Andy, I got to tread lightly here because my oldest son, Vince, who lives in Omaha, is an LSU graduate, okay? So oh. I got to tiptoe a little here. <laughs> Uh, I paid a whole, you know, four and a half years of tuition there. So, yeah, we got some LSU in our heart, and nothing is better th than the College World Series, except if you have the College World Series with LSU in it, then it becomes even better. Baton Rouge is a very Omaha-like town. Jump, uh, uh, People will come up here to, to scour that game and flip the coin. Two oh, yeah. SEC teams, I can't tell you who I lean to, but I think that's going to be a whale of a game, as you indicate. Yeah, I think it will be, too. And, and you can't look past, you know, LSU, they're known for their bats traditionally. But, man, I really like their pitching staff and what they've been able to do this season. They're three deep. They're strong. Um, they're going to be a tough out. But as you mentioned, Tennessee, I, you can't poke too many holes in Tennessee's uh, staff or uh, starting lineup either. Yeah, I would say that if Tennessee can get to the LSU bullpen, that's what has been a problem for them during the regular season, but it's been a strength for them in the postseason, so we'll see. There you go. Well, you heard the horn there, Lou, so we're up against it, but could we get you back to talk a little UFC fight night? Anytime. I'm, I'm totally into it. Whenever we want to go, let's do it. Fantastic. You heard it, folks. Don't go anywhere. This is WT. L.